Hi there, welcome to Killian's Kitchen and this week we are doing biltong. Biltong is a kind of dried meat, it's kind of like jerky, but better. And um, it is perhaps the most iconic dish to come out of South Africa. Every South African is going to go gaga for this stuff, I promise you. So it's a pretty simple thing to make. Um, I'm actually doing a slight variation on it today. We're doing something called chili bites, which, are, which is built on cutting too much thinner stripes. Um, but basically it's the same process, the same idea. You can do it however you like. So let's get started. But before we do, what are we drinking? Well, I thought it was absolutely appropriate to drink a South African wine to open a South African red. So this particular wine is by a winery called Arabella um, in the Western Cape, about two, three, I think, maybe four hours Outside of Cape Town, east of Cape Town. This is a Cab Sav, it's 2019. I wish it were a bit older. 2019 is a bit young to be drinking it, but what the heck? We're making Biltong, let's go for it. That is very decent. I mean, for nine bucks, come on. It's ridiculous, actually, for nine bucks. That's, that tastes like a $20 bottle of wine. Highly recommend it. Check it out. Arabella. Okay, so. Obviously you have to have meat, but I'm going to get into that in a second. Um, let's start with the spices because that's what you've got to prepare first. So take your scale and get a bowl on there. Um, I'm going to post the recipe in, 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 the, in the text at the bottom here. Um, and the recipe is for 10 kilograms, which is a lot. So divide how many kilograms of meat you have. In this case, I have almost 5 kilograms. It's a lot more than I usually make. Um, but it doesn't really matter. You know, you know, anything from one kilogram and up, you just divide the amounts that I have in there um, in, by the appropriate amount. And it's a very simple uh, spicing process. So let's start with salt. Better to use coarse salt um, than fine salt, I find. Um, and this calls for 90 grams, 180 for 10 kilograms. So we're going to go with about nine, just a little short of 90 grams of coarse salt. Okay, next thing is the coriander. Now, the coriander is the basic engine of South African meat. That is what gives South African meat, in, in general, its special flavor. Um, Burevors is the most iconic sausage um, to come out of South Africa, and um, it is all about coriander. Coriander is a big deal. It's in all biltong. So um, what I do is I, take, I buy whole coriander, and then I roast it in the oven um, at... Depends, about 350, 320, it depends on the coriander, until it's kind of this cool brown color. Now this recipe calls for 60 grams for 10, so we're going to go with a little shy of 30 grams. Great. Now, the important thing here is to, I mean, look, you can blend it. You can put in a blender or a, or a grinder, whatever you want. Fine, you get fine coriander. But the thing about biltong that gives it its uh, real character is the fact that you don't finely ground this coriander. Leave the husks on there. So you find little husks stuck to the side of the biltong. I mean, that is what makes it iconic. So I just like to use a mortar and pestle, something really this simple. Um, or if you're going to do it in a, in a grinder or something, just do it half-half so that you're still left with, I'll show you. You know, it's ground up. But you can see there are still plenty of husks in there and that is what gives it its character that makes it very rustic union break okay next thing is black pepper now i find um the finer the black pepper the better um uh, i would normally grind black pepper but in this case i want the coriander to be the star of the show the black pepper's there just for you know high and this calls for 20 grams for 10 kilograms of meat. So we're doing a little, uh, a little short of 10 grams here. A little bit of brown sugar. Now, you don't have to do the brown sugar. You know, we're using Worcester sauce. Worcester sauce has got sugar in it. Um, so you don't have to do this. I find it does help a little. And it calls for um, 30 for 10. So we're going to do around 15 grams of brown sugar. You can use any kind of sweetener or sugar you like, it doesn't really matter. And then, you know, here's where you add, you know, insert 
flavor of your choice. You can do anything from garlic powder to onion powder to um, curry powder. I usually actually make my biltong with curry when I'm making normal proper biltong, big, big pieces. I'm normally doing it with curry powder. Um, in this case though, I found paprika and this is an, an imported paprika. I buy it myself when I go to Budapest. Um, it's really good. And um, I find this is the, is, is the one that works the best in, in, in this case, you know, for these chili bites. So um, this calls for 45 grams for 10. All right, there we go. Let's take a look at the meat. Now, in South Africa, we use silver side. Um, they don't call it that here. I think they have different names in every country. Um, here they call it round. It's either a bottom round or a center round, uh, even a top round. Um, usually the bottom round is the closest, as I understand, but you can't always find bottom round. People don't use that cut here much. So I get a center round or a round eye round, they call it. Take your meat cleaver and let's get going. Um, because this is a much more time consuming process with chili bites than it is with just regular bolt-on because you're cutting much smaller bits. As you can see, I keep the fat intact and um, we'll use that fat. Um, and now starts the long, arduous process of cutting little pieces. Now keep in mind when this dries and you're putting this uh, in your dehydrator, these things are going to lose, you know, anywhere up to 50% of their size and weight. Um, so keep that in mind as you're cutting and sizing up these pieces. Again, if I was making traditional biltong, this is the kind of pieces I'd be cutting. But in this case, we are cutting these down to much smaller little bits. That's why they're called chili bites. And believe me, these things are like crack to South Africans. Just have a look at how this meat is marbled um, and why this is the preferred cut of meat for biltong. Okay, now, once you've cut the meat up, um, there are different ways you can do this. You don't have to do it this way. Um, a lot of people, in fact, I used to, I do the same when I make normal biltong actually, is spice the meat first and then spray on the vinegar um, and the Worcester sauce. Um, but it doesn't matter. I've actually found with, with these particular chili bites, it's better to do it this way that I'm going to show you now, um, which is to take your vinegar and you can use literally any kind of vinegar. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I tend to prefer malt vinegar actually, but, um, that is hard to find around these parts. So I just use a white wine vinegar. And you want to be liberal. You want to put as much vinegar in there so that you have a good half an inch of it at the bottom of the tray. So that this can lie in that vinegar overnight and marinate in it. As I say about half Worcester sauce, half vinegar. And give it a nice good massage. And in the early days of me making this, I always used to put the um, spices on during this process. Um, but what I found is the spices, half of them would just fall off um, into the marinade. And so I, uh, I started doing it this way and adding the spices in the morning. So overnight, it's just going to sit in this marinade without any of the spices. And I find that when you put the spices on there, especially that it's got the salt in there, it sort of draws up a little bit of the marinade. Um, and so you immediately kind of get a head start in the drying process, in a sense, uh, which I find to be quite helpful. This is my preferred way of doing it now. So there you are. We're going to put that in the fridge overnight. And at some point in the middle of the night, whether I'm getting up to take an old man pee or just uh, getting up for some water, I'm going to come in and re massage these for a few minutes and pop them back in again um, and then in the morning we'll take a look oh, and I forgot to mention very important cover them up before you put them in the fridge because the marinade you don't want the marinade to just disappear into the air you want it to disappear into the meat so I use uh, plastic wrap but it don't matter you can use a foil or anything you like just give it a good good covering before you pop it in the in the uh, fridge all right, so we're going to check this out tomorrow and see how it looks. Okay, it's the next morning and these have been in the fridge all night. So let's see how they look. It looks really good. You can see it's well marinated. And now what we're going to do is put them into a big bowl. Pick them up. Um, you want as little of the actual marinade to go in there as well. At least let the excess marinade drip off. 
Okay, now, bowl full of meat, and we're gonna take the spice that we mixed up yesterday, and just gonna give it a quick remix. Okay, now we're gonna start just spreading very liberally over, give it a couple of handfuls, and then do a bit of a mix. Just keep mixing it like this. Another couple of handfuls, and mix. And this way you get a very consistent spread across all of the meat. I don't know if you can see that, but the spices have really sucked up the um, excess liquid from the marinade there. Now for the machine. Okay, now this is the machine I'm using. It's a, an electric dehydrator. You can use it for fruit or anything you like. Um, I also just put a piece of paper towel in the bottom there. Um, that'll just help with the excess stuff that's going to drip. Don't forget to make a hole for the um, exhaust hole there. We are ready to add. Now you don't want to have meat on top of meat. It's generally better to, to have them spaced apart as far as possible. In this case, because I just have such a big load, I'm not really going to be able to do that. So I'm going to pack it a bit more tightly than I otherwise would. Okay, this is a nice one um, because it enables you to stack the trays inside of each other and then you just turn them and they function as normal. Trays and you, you save up the space that way when you're storing this thing in your cupboard. All right, now that everything is packed in there, pop the lid on and let's get it going. Now, I like to do it at the lowest temperature possible. Um, I wish this thing even went lower. So I've set it to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, we'll check back tomorrow. Okay, it's been just shy of two days and it is ready. And look at that, a thing of absolute beauty. Now for storage, the best thing is paper bags brown paper bags because they kind of absorb a bit of the fat keep it dry and from going bad however if you want to store it in plastic be sure to vacuum pack it that's no problem um, or if you're going to freeze it you can vacuum pack it in plastic that's no problem but for just storing it around the house paper bags is the way to go hours days, maybe even weeks of yummy goodness. And you know, it's healthy. There's no preservatives, there's no crazy ingredients, everything natural. So that's how to do biltong, biltong chili bites. If you want to impress a South African. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.